Hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. I'm Shane Wakimbaloye in Lagos. Well, democracy is all about choices, choosing between or among alternatives. Is it a case of the more the merrier? Well, in the United States, which many consider as one of the greatest democracies in the world, the electorates are presented with two main choices, largely speaking. There are more than two parties in the United States anyways, and may be left with voting the lesser of two evils. In Nigeria, the case is different. As we speak, there are about 68 political parties. But are the parties synonymous to the options available to a Nigerian voter? On the ballot paper, yes. But on who becomes what? Not quite. Judging from the trend since the multi-party system, uh, which was uh, in reintroduced in Nigeria, it's 299 days to the general elections. And as we approach the crucial year, Nigerians are once again coming to terms with the electoral choices they have to make. From all indications, 2019 election promises to be far more complex in terms of which political individuals to vote for in different positions available. The political space is welcoming new entrants, promising a departure from the ruling APC and the main opposition, the PDP. My first guest tonight is one of those you can say he's an outsider in the Nigerian political arena. Joining me tonight is uh, a media entrepreneur, the publisher of Sahara Reporters, and a presidential aspirant, Omoyele Shawure. Thank you so much for coming on Thank the program tonight. Thank you for tonight. bringing me on the show. It's quite interesting. Uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. who knew you when you were uh, a, a union leader in, in University of Lagos yes. who, who will say, what exactly is he coming to do? Wanted to become a president? Some, some have even criticized it to say that's far, asking far too much. Well, you know, the problem with Nigeria is that uh, a lot of people have had their dignity and their self-esteem battered so much that they've internalized oppression and internalized inferiority complex. To the extent that they don't believe that if you are not the son of a former governor or a former president, you cannot aspire to the position of the president of the country. And so they ask you to go and become a counselor, but they have forgotten that for people like me, when some of the characters today, some of the players in our political arena today were hiding under their bed, I was fighting for the democracy that we have today. It will be 20 years by 2000, uh, 2019 that, I, that our democracy that we fought for as student leaders from 1989 to 1999 came to be. So I am not actually a neophyte, as you've implied. It's only that I have not been involved in electoral politics in the sense that I've not been a partisan politician. I've worked So unionism is still on one hand, uh, politics, mainstream politics is, is on one hand. So if you, if you refer to a Donald Trump as, uh, as an outsider, he, he was even referred to as an outsider. Yeah. He is an outsider in the mainstream politics. I so you are. I don't want to use Donald Trump as a yardstick for judging myself. That would be going too far extremely to somewhere I don't want to go because I have my reservation about his personality. But if you want to use that, I don't even fit in. I fit in into an area where I have been a monitor and a fighter for democratic rule in the country. I've been part of every democratic development in Nigeria from the period of June 12th uh, to the period where we eventually transition from military rule to democratic rule, or whatever you want to call it. I was part of the people who fought against third term uh, by former President Obasanjo, fought to help a, a minority presidential person, vice president then, to become a president of Nigeria. Fought In to, what way were you fighting this? Oh, you know, there, was, there used to be something called the Yaradua Cabal in this country. When president, former president Yaradua was sick in Saudi Arabia, brain dead, and a cabal held this country to ransom. It was through a media platform I operated, known as Sahara Reporters, that we were able to find out that he was sick and we needed to move from him to another person. That was Jonathan was his VP then. But all the forces around the cabal made it impossible for Jonathan to even know the real state of health of Jonathan, or for the Nigerian people to do so. We came up and said so, and with the reporting we're doing constantly, Nigeria was able to find out that they didn't have a president anymore. There were protests, and Jonathan came to power. Mr. Yes. because the big question would be uh, leadership, 
political leadership is different from unionism. No, I, you are. And you, a lot you, of Nigerians you will are ask at, you. You are looking at a lot of people you, will look you, at you your profile. You make you keep mentioning unionism as if it's the only thing I've ever done in my life. No, no, I, uh, that's yeah, what a lot of people know you. No, for. no, it's not true. I, I mean, think, especially I, those who have followed you for a I long think time. Recently, most people actually know me as a media entrepreneur who created one of the best media platforms in this country that challenged the status quo and had become successful and competed globally. That's the Harry Potter. So you cannot claim that the last time you heard about me was... As no, 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 I'm not saying the last time. Investor but I'm Vegas. saying that but even what that looks like what you, are uh, what you want to do now is what I'm relating to. But yeah. the question would be, your profile and your credential in wanting to be a president of no, Nigeria. No, no, what, what, what does a president of Nigeria want to be? Is a person who has political will to do what is right? Is a person who is well-educated, intellectual enough, somebody who has integrity? The people that you are likely referring to as having experience are the people who have experience in looting this country, people who have experience in assassination, political gerrymandering, carpet bagging. I am not that. I'm talking to you as someone who is monitoring the process. There's a video, by the way, that is online that you can find with me standing behind Bashar Rem in 1993. I was 21 years old. It was the most difficult to stand by a person of that status. I stood there. And you cannot just look at me and say people were hiding under their bed in 1992 who came and benefited from my sweat are more qualified than me. That's what I'm trying to explain to what you. What is the reason, your main reason for yeah. coming out this time? We've got to a point where Nigerians like me across the country, across the world are saying enough is enough. We no longer want very mediocre leaders, very corrupt leaders, leaders who are unprepared, and leaders who don't know their left from their right. There's also an issue of age, you know, and I'm not saying that because if you say age, then you have to look about young people who are not exactly the right people for the positions they are occupying now. In the Senate, in the House of Rep, some of them are governors, but young people who have astute qualities to be able to defend what the people of this country want, how they want it, and how it can be achieved. People who have exposure, people who have done the right things when it's difficult to do so. And that's where I come in. So those ones, and if you want to talk about education, I'll probably be the first candidate at this time who has a master's degree in public administration from an Ivy League school in the US. I graduated from UNLAG, and I went to the US and obtained a master's degree at Columbia University in New York. I don't want to brag, but I'm more qualified than any of these guys that you have out there today who are running this country. That's why I said the other day, without missing words, when I arrived in Nigeria, that I can run this country better than the current rulers or leaders. Even in my sleep, this country will be run better than they are uh, doing.